Okay, so uh, hi everyone, I'm Vanessa Zema and I work at the Max Planck Institute for Physics for the Cosinus experiment and I'm glad to give you an overview on the status of Cosinus and also a brief overview on the status of uh, uh, the other experiments that share the same goal as Cosinus, which is the cross-check of the Dama Libra result. As every one of you knows, in the assumption that the galaxy is surrounded by a halo of dark matter particles, the combination of velocities of the Sun and of the Earth introduce a time dependence in the velocity, uh, in the relative velocity between uh, the uh, dark matter and the detector of the Earth. And this translates into a time dependence in the expected rate, uh, which uh, therefore means that we expect an annual modulating signal in our detectors. According to this idea that was considered a smoking gun for dark matter, in uh, already 1996, the experiment DAMA placed 25 sodium iodine thallium doped crystals, high in radio pure, in uh, Gran Sasso. And since then, they are measuring a signal which is compatible with the expectations. Uh, they collected now 2.86 tons per year of exposure, and uh, 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 their signal has a 13.7 sigma of confidence level. Uh, their uh, phase two, uh, which was released recently, uh, pushed the threshold down from two kV electron equivalent to one kV electron equivalent. I say electron equivalent because this is a scintillator at room temperature, so the conversion of the energy scale from scintillation light to nuclear recoils requires a quenching factor, so the, the, the um, knowledge about this uh, that is dependent on the crystal production, so it has to be measured crystal by crystal. Um, the next phase that is currently running now uh, is devoted uh, uh, to push further the threshold to 0.5 kV electronegative. This would have been uh, one of the major discovery of uh, our century if uh, someone else would have observed the same signal, but the problem is that so far nobody else has observed. So the community has decided that we need uh, a model independent cross-check of this signal and therefore um, Five experiments at the moment are approved um, using sodium iodide targets. Two anise and cosine are currently running, and three cosinus picolor and zebra are under construction. There is also a recent project that I will not cover here, but is very interesting, so I suggest to check out uh, if you're interested. This is the Astar project. So ANAISA is running nine sodium iodide crystals in the Canon Frank Underground Laboratory in Spain and they collected uh, five years of uh, data which correspond to three years of exposure or at least they published three years of exposure data and they showed here that they can trigger already below one kV electron equivalent and they have a background model detector by detector and they showed that they do not see an annual modulation in their data. They want now, so the, the next step is to collect uh, more exposure and publish more um, uh, robust results. Um, for uh, cosine, uh, they are uh, running eight sodium iodide thallium dot crystals uh, in uh, uh, South Korea and uh, they published already results uh, for the cutting count method uh, so uh, not about uh, modulation here and uh, they show that in the standard scenario they can already exclude uh, the two islands by Dama Libra and with standard scenario I mean uh, the interpretation of data done uh, using this package of assumptions that we use in direct detection to compare results that correspond to the velocity distribution, the interaction of dark matter with our detectors and also the um, uh, the model for the nuclear four factors. Uh, the results for the annual modulation are not conclusive, uh, so their goal now is to um, in increase the radio purity of the crystals and run with more exposure uh, with cosine 200 by 2023. Piccolon has this huge program that goes to 2031. Um, they currently have two ingots with uh, a very low uh, background level and um, 
they, they plan to uh, now measure a new one and to start the commissioning. And they did uh, a quenching factor measurement campaign, which is very important, as I said. So I wanted to mention because it's very relevant. Also, Anais did, uh, but uh, in that case, the problem is that they did on crystals that they don't use. So uh, there is this open point on uh, measuring the crystals that are actually in the ground. Um, SABRE is, uh, a pro uh, is an experiment with twin detectors, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. Uh, the one in the north is located in uh, the Gran Sasso laboratory. They did already a proof of principle which shows that they have a very low background that is comparable to the one of Dama Libra. And the next step now is to demonstrate that they can reach the same performance without the activator that unfortunately now cannot be used anymore in the laboratory for safety reasons. So this is a very next uh, step. Sempre uh, South uh, uh, will be located in the first underground laboratory in the southern hemisphere in uh, Sopel, which is uh, close to Melbourne. And um, they are waiting for the finalization of the laboratory and except for that everything is ready for installation. So they plan to install and, uh, the crystals by 2023. They have uh, a detailed uh, background model that they published recently and also the highest purity crystals that have a background that is below the one of Tama Libra. So all the experiments I mentioned so far are scintillator at room temperature with one channel, so they detect the scintillation light. Uh, Cusinus is uh, an experiment that has uh, also um, a sodium iodide target but uh, uh, is a dual channel cryogenic limiter. So um, can measure both the heat and the light. And uh, this has an advantage that I will explain now. So first of all, a cryogenic calorimeter. So the um, working principle consists in measuring the uh, vibrations of the lattice that are uh, induced by a particle interacting with the, uh, with the target. Uh, so these vibrations flow to the uh, surface that end up collected by a sensor that in the case of Cusinus is the transition edge sensor that was developed by VEST at uh, Max Planck in the last 30 years. And uh, the, the transition edge sensor is this thin film of uh, uh, superconducting material, now in our case it's tungsten, which is uh, operated in between the normal conducting and the superconducting phase in this linear region where tiny increase in temperature uh, are co corresponds to jump, larger jumping resistance. Uh, this uh, signal is then amplified and this is the type of pulse that then we record. In Cusinus, we had to develop something uh, slightly different for the coupling uh, of the TS with the absorber because sodium iodide is uh, highly hygroscopic and has a low melting point. So it's uh, difficult uh, to uh, fabricate a TS on it and standard um, fabrication processes cannot be used. Uh, so we implemented a new idea that was uh, suggested by Matt Pyle in 2015 and uh, this was um, um, uh, one of the, the major achievements of the, la the last period. Um, what we do is to uh, place a gold foil on top of the surface of the crystal and uh, connect the TS with the gold bonding wire and the TS is fabricated instead on a separated wafer that is a remote, that's why remote TS, in our case it's sapphire. And uh, um, this is uh, now our phonon channel that uh, is uh, mostly um, particle independent, so the heat uh, is, uh, is uh, thank you, uh, is um, uh, uh, measured using this channel, uh, while the light detector is a silicon beaker, uh, which has a TS on, uh, on the surface, and uh, this measures the scintillation light that is emitted in the process of a particle interacting with the, with the absorber, and uh, the scintillation light depends on the type of uh, particles. So electromagnetic interactions emit more light than the nuclear recoils. And by using the ratio of the light versus energy, we can uh, provide particle discrimination. So this is the advantage of cosinus. Uh, if we simulate a signal uh, that is in violet here, 
you see that we can separate the background from, uh, from the signal and we define background electromagnetic interaction because we are in the first phase at least checking uh, the, um, uh, the nuclear recoil nature of the dama Lieber result. So if it is a nuclear recoil, we would see in the nuclear band. And you see here that uh, this plot is light versus colon energy and uh, uh, for cosinus, uh, all the events that are on the right of this blue curve are events in the region of interest, we can detect them. Uh, while for uh, an experiment, experiment like DAMA, uh, the, the events are all the ones that are above the black line, which is uh, the threshold that we like to detect. And this is the kind of plot that we usually use, is uh, the light yield versus energy, and the light yield is the ratio of the light energy to colon energy. And you see that the events uh, uh, distribute in bands. In black is the electron gamma band, in blue the sodium recoils, and in green the iron recoils. In red are the uh, events that we simulated at the other signal, and in gray is where the, the regional interest of DAMA would fall in this plot. And you would see that if that matter was what we simulated here, then uh, the red dots in the gray line in the gray region would be the events detected. Um, this is a projection that shows what is our goal, that is to achieve 1 keV of pressure and 100 kg days for the first phase of cosinus. And um, um, I am happy to show the latest results that we have using the REMO TS that show the particle discrimination. And um, these are data taken with the neutron thoughts and uh, a 1 cm cube of sodium, sodium iodide and a silicon beaker that had a performance of 20 EV baseline resolution, while the baseline resolution of the remo TS was 0 0.79, that uh, in a conservative way we can say by a factor of 5 would be a threshold of 2 kV. And you can say here that the red line is the threshold for 6 kV. So for this kind of exclusion in the standard scenario, 6 kV would be enough, but we want to go lower because we want to provide a model independent uh, cross check. Okay. So the next step now is to um, uh, test a larger crystal and also to achieve a full coverage by using a silicon lead on the bottom. This is currently mounted now at the, uh, at the Gran Sasso laboratory, so we are testing it, so finger cross. And um, now I want to uh, focus more on the facility. Uh, so we are in the Natasso National Laboratory in the whole big loss to Xenon. Uh, this is our facility that foresees a service building, a clean room, a water tank, a dry well where uh, the kind of study is then placed. And uh, um, a lot of attention is placed to decouple the cryostat from uh, vibrations. And uh, we have this system of two frames. The blue one is the one where the infrastructure is built on, while the yellow one is the one where the cryostat is, uh, is placed. And there is a bellow that uh, decouples the pulse tube from the rest of the cryostat. There is a second stage that is uh, the um, cryostat stage uh, that uh, uses this uh, ultra quiet technology, which is developed by Cryo Concept that uses instead of a mechanical contact uh, between the 50k and the 4k um, uh, st uh, stages, uh, uses uh, a gas for the uh, heat exchange. And at the detector stage there is uh, uh, work going on, uh, some studies to the carbon from the radiation shield, there is a copper cake, the rest of the detector. And uh, we also have a water tank that uh, moderates nutrients, but uh, it will be also used as a muon beta uh, by um, uh, keeping it with 30 PMTs to lower the rate of cosmogenic nutrients. And this is a timeline. So August 2022 is uh, the current status. They are building the uh, service building and the water tank is ready and also with Okay, and uh, this is our timeline for the first phase. Um, that, uh, yeah, okay. uh, for the first phase that uh, um, um, consists in delivering the first mapping results by 2024. Okay, so I want to leave you with uh, this uh, uh, slide with uh, the collaboration and also I want to acknowledge the people from the different collaborations so who provided me with material to update you up with their results. So,
thank you so much for the great talk and uh, the great work. Uh, just a quick question for someone who's a little unfamiliar. So when you talk about like the kind of model dependent case, so what kind of is the ideas that might move the tension between the uh, cosine results, for example, and down the results? What's the idea there? Okay. So I show you something that I didn't put because of time uh, constraints. So this uh, is a, a work that was published before uh, starting the like the planning on what to install. And um, this shows uh, this paper here shows uh, uh, what is the exposure that we need to achieve to compare. Uh, our results with the one of the And then here it is shown that if you have a cut and count experiment uh, that uses the same target material, you, need, you don't need to search for annual modulation because uh, the, uh, if you consider the rate in June and December that usually are the two rates that are used, uh, if you sum them and you do an average, this will be always larger than uh, doing the residual. That is what Dama Libra does, so the difference divided by two. With this very simple idea, it was shown that you can exclude an arbitrary recoil spectrum by um, uh, making a compromise between the threshold and the exposure. So this shows which exposure we need if we have one of these, uh, those thresholds. This plot, however, is not, include, um, is not updated for the phase two with the new threshold of 1 kV. And actually, we need also to uh, update the 0 0.5 because hopefully they will reach it. So yeah, this is not updated. But this is the idea. And uh, uh, yeah, if you relax a bit the hypothesis, then you need the less exposure. That's why a falling recoil spectrum would need the less exposure and uh, a spin independence scattering even less. Besides testing the dark matter hypothesis from the dominant results, yeah. how important do you think it is for us as a community to understand what's giving them a modulation signal? Very, very important. So this is one of the points that I think are uh, uh, very um, interesting in the case of Cusinus because we can provide the particle discrimination. So if I go to uh, one of <laughs> the light yield plot, uh, okay, well, there is the data value, so also nice to see. Um, if, here. So here, oh, here. So um, if the modulation is something that occurs in the nuclear band, then um, so let, let's assume that we, we, have, we don't shield it, because this is also important. No? We have different shieldings. So if we don't shield it, and we see it in the bands, then we can say if it is uh, in the electro uh, gamma band or in the nuclear band. And this already says something. So it, it gives uh, an information, an additional information with respect to scintillators at room temperature. So this is, uh, you see here, for example, that we simulated the, the uh, potassium line at 3.2 keV, and you see it clearly in the electron gamma band. So already there, these kind of backgrounds we can discriminate, so, yeah. A general question. Yes. How many experiments exist now? A number. Which are based on the scope to test the double result? Okay, there are, uh, I, I mentioned here five because are the approved ones. Uh, there is, in particular, cosine is uh, the combination of two different ones uh, that uh, are collaborating. And um, there is this project, Astarot, that, however, is a project, so it has not been approved. It was the, the papers in 2019, the first ones. It's interesting, because we usually are discussing about us to be negative slash ironic about Dama, but if so many experiments try to check uh, Dama, I think it means something good for Dama. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it would be great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Last question. So <clears throat> maybe it's a little bit of a mistake, but if for a second I ignore gamma downsides in the model, what are the advantages of sodium iodide specifically compared to other scintillators? Uh, it scintillates 
very nicely, so a lot. So this is a good, uh, a good aspect of sodium iodide. And also it's easy to scale the mass. Um, in part, like for the calorie meters, we also plan to do it. I skipped one slide, I don't know why. It was the plan. Okay. Um, so um, we can also make an upgrade and uh, enlarge the exposure. But in the case of calorie meters, uh, of course, uh, you have, it's a trade off with the threshold. But if you have a scintillator at room temperature, you can scale the mass very easily. And it's also it's at room temperature with the PMT, and uh, you don't need to cool down. So this is, uh, in general, the, the advantage of a sodium iodide uh, scintillator. Mm -hmm. The radio purity also. Mm -hmm. What was my question? Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Right, so then coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs>